it's a truly multidisciplinary meeting. It brings lots of fields together and it's the pan-national, international nature of this meeting that allows the very best science, the very best uh, uh, clinical trials data to be presented in a truly international format. Oncology is a subject area in medicine that's undergoing profound change at the moment. Why is that? I think it's because technology is now so complex and one has the opportunity to profile tumours so deeply within a clinical trial setting that so many clinical trials now have biological endpoints associated with them. So we're seeing this, I mentioned, this multidisciplinary nature of a conference like this come together around understanding drug response in a patient in real time using the panoply of molecular tools we have at our disposal now. Three organisers, myself, James Gully and Tony Rebass, have different areas of expertise. Um, Gully comes at this from the clinical trials perspective. Um, Tony Rebass comes at this from the you know, immunology perspective, trying to understand response and resistance at the genomic level to these drugs. And you know, my expertise is in the area of cancer genome evolution and thinking about new ways to target tumors based on mutations and neoantigens that are present in every tumor cell. So the three of us, I think, bring different areas of expertise that will link up clinical trials with genomics, biology and evolution and resistance to therapy. Immunology is really the central plank of this meeting. There are multiple sessions on response to checkpoint inhibitors, response and resistance, understanding CAR T cell therapy response, understanding the impact of the tumor microenvironment around the tumor and how it shapes cancer evolution and response to therapy. There are many aspects of this, broadly speaking, tumor immunology, genome instability, cancer cell evolution, um, and genomic driven clinical trials that bring it all together. What I expect to see over the next six months um, will be more data in this area of resistance to checkpoint blockade molecules like pembrolizumab, uh, nivolumab and what have you, um, studies that really intricately map treatment response and treatment resistance, getting to the heart of why patients develop resistance or tumours develop resistance to these drugs, and I suspect data like this will be really centrally um, uh, you know, front of house in this meeting. Um, and we'll be seeing uh, many more mechanisms of resistance to these drugs. So for me, it's about achieving cures in the metastatic setting. That is where I want to see us get to in the next 40 years. We've already seen some hints of that now in melanoma, um, long-term responders in other solid tumours. And what I'm looking forward to is seeing updates on this data, seeing relevant combinations coming through of um, targeted therapies with checkpoint blockade, um, I guess immuno-immuno combinations, uh, multiple combinations of checkpoint molecules to see if that enhances long-term complete responses and long-term responders in these cohorts and understanding who and who doesn't respond because these drugs are expensive we need to know who best to treat and when to treat them and you know a lot of the research that we present at this meeting will give us key insights into molecular mechanisms of response and resistance that will allow us to use these drugs more effectively. I think if you look back 30 years um, the integration of laboratory research within the clinical setting was less common. Now many trainees dual train. They're training in the lab, doing their PhDs, doing their postdoctoral fellowships, at the same time as seeing patients in the clinic. And it's that integration of the bench with the bedside and back again that is going to be key to making progress in this disease. And this, this conference will give trainees the opportunity to meet scientists, clinician scientists and clinical trialists and give them those contacts they need to go on and do their next postdocs or think about their PhDs, for example. We have seen time and time again in the last two decades advances in molecular biology from you know, understanding cancer genomic drivers like BRAF, EGFR, all the way through to understanding the impact of the tumor microenvironment on um, immune surveillance, the identification of checkpoint molecules like CDL, CTLA-4 and PD-1, and the prosecution of those targets with um, monoclonal antibodies that we're seeing are so effective in the clinical setting. CAR T cell therapy, manipulation of, 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 of immune cells to, to drive tumor responses much more effectively. I mean, it's just beautiful, this overlap between the laboratory and the clinic that are making real differences to patient outcome now. The ACR is uh, a real force for good. There's no two ways about it. It's, it's the ACR meetings are premier events in the calendar. Everybody congregates to these meetings. It's the fertile soil upon which all developments in cancer are made.